Hello, everybody. My name is Noah Teff, um, and about a year ago, maybe exactly a year ago, I made one of these videos um, highlighting my 2018. And today, I'm going to do the same thing for my 2019, sort of a reflection video. Uh, it's not something I'm looking forward to making, but I feel like it's more necessary for me to talk about just as a, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's good to just talk about things. Like, even if you're not talking to people, just like, I'm just sitting here talking to a camera, but just hearing myself say the things and just, you know, getting them out of my system, it, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to get some release. You don't want to bottle everything in. And I don't have any friends, but I have an audience, and I imagine at least a thousand people will watch this, so good enough for me. Um, so last year, 2018, was previously the worst year of my life. Um, my best friend Justin died in a car accident in May, and that wasn't fun. And when I made this video last year, I think I remember saying at the end, well, at least it can't get worse next year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was wrong. Uh, so that sucks. Um, this year was worse, somehow. So, where should we start? I guess from the beginning. Um, so, January of last year, it's almost like a bad omen from the beginning. Uh, my channel was in a dry spell at the time, and stuff I was uploading was just doing nothing in terms of viewership. I think that's when they had the Jeopardy bomb and around uh, the twist bombed and all that. Interestingly enough, it started around this time last year, and now around this time this year, my channel has suddenly died again. Suddenly, all all the shit died off again, <laughs> just just like last year. So I don't know what it is about this type of year, but I have to do some Father Ted next month <laughs> to avoid the shit. I don't know what it is about this time of year, man, but it just, my channel just goes kaputs, I guess. Um, so that was a bad album from the start. Um, so, coming in this year, I had two cats. My first cat, named Jerry, was 19 years old. Uh, for reference, I am 21. G I, we got Jerry when I was about 11 months old. So I was just about a year older than that cat. So I had pretty much had that cat my entire life. Now, my understanding is the average age for a house cat, I believe, is 16. Um, Jerry, up until around when he was 18, was fortunate enough to be extremely healthy his entire life. He never really had any problems at all. He was extremely lucky. Even past the average age for a cat, he was still healthy. Um, until he started to get sick in 2018, um, and turns out he had, uh, liver failure, I think, and, uh, or was it kidney failure? I think it was kidney failure. One of the other, basically, like, his kidneys were, like, leaking and stuff, and it was, it's, it's seen as, like, um, he was losing fluids. So look at it, the dent, the, um, vet explained to us like this, think of it as a bucket with a fold of water and there's a hole at the bottom of the bucket. The water is slowly dripping out of the bucket and if you're not displacing it, eventually the bucket's gonna be empty. That's what was happening to him. He was displacing water faster than he could gain it in. So, but even if a bucket's got a hole at the bottom, if you pour water into the bucket quick enough, you can even it out. So we started giving him fluids in 2018. And after we started giving him the fluids, he kind of went back to normal um, until earlier this year when he just started getting worse and worse. And near the end, he couldn't walk at all. And when we kind of hit us, it's like, dude, he, he can't walk, you know? And I feel like we were waiting because I feel like maybe we had the idea that he would just pass away peacefully. Uh, in his sleep, maybe, at the house. But if there's one thing I knew about that cat, it's that he refused to die. He refused to die his entire fucking life. He refused to die. So we had him put down in late March. Um, 
of 2000, uh, of 2019, late March. Um, I wasn't there when they put him down, but apparently, again, just talking about refusing to die, he fought to the end. Apparently, they fucking injected him with the shit, and he hissed and growled and fucking put up a fuss until it overtook him. Um, so yeah, he was an asshole to the end. <laughs> um, so about, so obviously my fallback, my cushion was it sucked I lost Jerry, but at least I had Kitty, who was my sweet little angel ragdoll cat, um, who was very popular on the channel. She often Kitty often stayed upstairs and Jerry stayed downstairs, so the channel wasn't really familiar with Jerry because he was old and, you know, we, he can't really climb stairs that well. Um, so, and Kitty would mainly just stay upstairs because she wouldn't be, like, maybe be by me. Um, Kitty uh, was very popular on the channel. Everyone, uh, everyone of my regular viewers knew her. She'd always show up in the videos and either sit on my lap or sit on a desk or do random shit. Um... About a week after Jerry died, I looked at her one night, and her eye was closed. Her left eye was closed, and she couldn't open it. So, we took her to the vet, and they diagnosed her with a tooth abscess. And they pulled the tooth and everything, and she had to sit in a cage for like a week with a cone on. Um so she wouldn't scratch the cone and all that. And originally, she had this big lump on the side of her face where the abscess was. And the vet told me that there was virtually no chance that it was a tumor. So, after three weeks, the lump didn't go down. And we go back to the vet, and the same vet that told me three weeks ago that there's virtually no chance it's a tumor looks at me and says, oh, yep, that's definitely a tumor. So, the situation was at the time, we had just spent a lot of money on Jerry. We had been spending money on him for get his fluid bags and all that. We had just spent $1,000 on dental surgery for Kitty. And what she needed, which was a biopsy um, and something else, I forget what it was, um, a biopsy and um, possible radiation treatment as well, I think, um, was going to cost around $2,200, which we didn't have. Um, so, here's the thing. I'm, I'm not the type of person to ask for help, even when I need it. I don't know if it's because of pride or some other bullshit, but that's just not in my nature. My nature is, if I have a problem, I'll deal with it myself, because it's my problem. But I was kind of out of options at this point, so I swallowed my pride, and I asked for help, and I asked you guys for help. I set up a GoFundMe uh, to try to get money uh, for the biopsy. Oh, you know what it was? It was a bi I remember now. It was a biopsy and a CAT scan. The biopsy itself cost $700, and the CAT scan uh, brought it all to about $2,200. Um, and I figured if I could at least, when I put the GoFundMe, I'm like, maybe I'll get like $300 from this, and maybe I can spot the rest for the biopsy. Um, so I got the $700 within like the first hour um, and in total you guys raised $3,600 to help her there was I think around 100 different donators and man that's still I've conveyed this to you guys in the past that's still the nicest shit anybody's ever done for me in my life because you guys didn't have to help me but you did, and I still don't think I'll ever be able to convey how grateful I am for that. Um, so, around this time, like we're in May now, I get told, we already had a plan for to get the biopsy 
and then I get told, and then I get the shit rescheduled. Um, because the dent, because the vet was on vacation, coincidentally. And I have to go to the chill, the animal hospital, I have to switch vets, and I have to wait a bunch of, do a bunch of shit. All while my cat is dying of probable mouth cancer. So, that didn't help. Um, around this time, it was definitely affecting my streams. I'll admit it, for those of you who don't know, I stream on Twitch every day. Um, I've streamed now for 860 days in a row. Over two years. I love it. For all the bad shit in my life, it has been the one constant in my life that's never left me. Um, and I don't know where I'd be without it. However, this is the only time, maybe during those 860 days, where I would admit I wasn't enjoying it. And I wasn't looking forward to it. I'll admit that I was literally doing it at the time just to continue the streak because I felt like I was obligated to do it, doing it. But I mean, I was putting off the streams to like 8 or 10 at night at my time, and I only streamed for like an hour at the time. They were bad streams because I was distressed and it wasn't fun for me at the time. Uh, then in May, almost a year after Justin's death, my grandmother died uh, of cancer. Um, and she is, was one of the toughest people I ever knew in my entire life. She originally contracted cancer in 2006, and she was told in 2006 that she was going to die then. And she didn't. And she fought that shit off for 13 more years. She outlived her son. My father died... Um, in 2016, about a month short of his 50th birthday, because he was addicted to alcohol and cigarettes more than half his life, and that shit catches up to you when you do that much alcohol and cigarettes for over half your life. Um, and it caught up to him. She passed away. Um, I have my birthday on the 1st, and then... I believe six days after, I might be wrong with these dates, I believe on the 6th, um, I got a call from the vet, the results of the biopsy, said that it was carcinoma, a mouth cancer, and basically that I couldn't save her. I could... I could have gotten a radiation and she would have maybe lived six months to a year and if I didn't she had about a month and I couldn't do the radiation because at that point I knew I couldn't save her and that would have just been me keeping her alive for my own selfish gain and then I figured I had a month but then I realized I didn't have a month I had a day because I talked about earlier, Jerry couldn't walk at the end. And I'll admit we didn't do right by him at the end. We probably should have put him down sooner. Because and I didn't want to make the same mistake twice because when Jerry died, he died he didn't die as himself. He didn't die as him. Kitty at that point was still herself. She was still her. But if I had waited maybe even another week, she wouldn't have been. So, I got the news that night. The day after that, I spent with her. And then the morning after that, we put her down. Uh, and I start to think back and just wonder if I lied to myself for those months. Wonder if I knew the entire time that I couldn't save her, but I had to lie to myself and tell me, tell myself that I could, because I couldn't. Ex I I just wasn't ready for the reality that I wasn't gonna be able to save her. And if you don't know me, you might think, well, why? It was not that big of a deal. It was just a cat. Let me let me paint a picture for you. Let me paint a picture in a way you might understand. 
have you ever had, and if you haven't, have you ever hoped to have someone or something that would love you unconditionally? Something that no matter what you did, no matter if you're mad, no matter if you lashed out and yelled at them or whatever, that they would still love you unconditionally. That's how that cat felt about me. She was attached to me at the hip. She spent majority of her days sleeping on me. If I left the room for two minutes, she'd come looking for me. If I went to use the bathroom, she'd meow at the door. She was attached at the hip to me. She slept on me every night. She was there when I woke up in the morning. Every time I record a video, she'd jump up on the desk. And I never have had something love me that unconditionally. And even the last day she was alive, she hadn't been sleeping with me for like a week up until that. And then I was sitting in my bed and knowing what was coming the next day. And she hopped up on my bed, just like everything was normal, and just laid on me and went to sleep. And then she was there when I woke up. She was extremely affectionate when I woke up. When we drove in a car to the vet, usually she meows her head off, but she was just calm. She sat there in my lap and she purred. And then when I was sitting in the vet's office waiting for the vet to come, absolutely losing my composure, she was just sitting in my lap, nuzzling my hand and purring. And when I put her on the desk, so he could put the needle in her. She didn't fight. She didn't try to struggle. She just looked at me. I almost feel like it's impossible, but almost in a way, she used her last day trying to make me feel better. And at the end of the day, I know I did the right thing. You, you know, when, when you when you go for something that you often question yourself, like, oh man, should I be doing this? Can I still save her? You know, stuff like this. Am I doing the right thing? I knew I was doing the right thing the moment I saw her die. Jerry could barely walk, and he still took the full dose of that thing and fought it to the end. With her, it took half the serum to kill her. The doctor went, got halfway through the sleep medicine, and she just keeled over and immediately stopped breathing. He was still putting it in. He was still finishing the dose, and she was already dead. And that's when I knew that I did the right thing, because she was ready. Um, so that wasn't fun at all. That wasn't even remotely fun. So after that, the only positive I could possibly think of it was I wasn't stressed anymore. And my streams got better as a result. I ended up doing a 12 hour, I think, in August. And I'd streamed early, and a lot of my viewers from my channel, I decided to advertise it on my YouTube. And a lot of viewers from my YouTube channel came in and watched the 12 hour. And that kind of hit me of, huh, huh, stupid. Maybe if you advertise on your YouTube and stream when your audience is actually awake, just maybe they'll show up. And they did. So I started streaming when my UK audience was awake and I started waking up at eight in the morning instead of waking up at noon. 
and streams I feel have been a lot better since. Um, second half of the year was a little less eventful, although the streams had gotten a lot better. We had some good months with YouTube. Five or ten video, would I lie to you, a couple videos did really well. Uh, as one last kick in the dick, my grandfather passed away um, on Halloween. Uh, he was also my uh, my uh, my dad's father. Just one last kick in the dick. And the worst thing this has done to me is as far as death goes at this point, I'm almost fucking numb to it at this point. Because it's like it's one after the fucking other. It's almost like I, I it's hard for me to have emotions towards it anymore because like, like it's almost like it's just gonna happen at this point you know um, it's left me very emotionless and I, I wanna assure for anyone who may be concerned watching this it hasn't made me suicidal I promised myself I'd never get back to that place and I never will I was in that place when I was younger um, and I was going for scoliosis and my life was pretty shit at that point but after I got the corrective surgery and had that taken care of I promised myself I'd never get back to that place and now that I'm older and I understand life a little bit more um, I understand about suicide. Suicide is, here's the thing about it, they, people think suicide um, is a be all end all to pain. It eliminates pain. It doesn't. It just passes it on. It takes the pain away from you, sure, but it just passes it on to people who care about you. And I could never do that to people who care about you. I could also never insult the memory of the people who love me um, to uh, to do that and I'm not saying it's a coward's way out but it's not brave either you're not brave to pull the trigger you're brave not to that's what makes you brave is not doing it trust me um, so now we're at the end of the year, and I had a fun Christmas, bought a lot of cool stuff for my family, bought them Switch and all that, we just sexy got done playing Mario Party. Um, where I stand right now is I don't have any IRL friends, because when I rekindled with Justin... All of a sudden, I had a lot of friends, because his friends became my friends. But after he died, they all magically stopped talking to me. You know, because they weren't really my friends because they liked me. They are my friends because of Justin. Um, so I don't really have any IRL friends. I have a lot of internet friends. And I have a lot of people to talk to every day, which is one of the reasons why uh, Twitch is so important to me. Because that's the interaction I get. Um, but yeah, just going to keep on keeping on, man. I'm not going to sit here and say, gee, golly gee, I hope 2020 is going to be better because I don't fucking know if it is. I'm just going to, just going to take life as it is. I'm going to take life as it is. And on chance that this is the first video of mine you're seeing, you've made at this point, I apologize. I promise I'm not usually this depressing. I promise you I'm not. But this is more of a depressing subject, unfortunately. Um, that was my 2019. Not a good one. Not a good one. So nothing left to do but take life as it is and see what happens. 
uh, last reaction video of the year comes out tomorrow. It'll be on YouTube. Hope you guys enjoyed it. How'd your 20 to 2019 go? Hopefully better than mine. If it went worse, I'm so sorry. Um, if it went better, tell me about it. Even if it worse, tell me about it. Feel free to share. But yeah, I guess, uh, I mean, I guess I, I don't want to say I'm hoping for a good year, but to be honest, I guess it's all I can do is hope for a better year next year. <laughs> I guess it's all I fucking can do, man. So, yeah, that's uh, about it for me today. I'll never video tomorrow, which will be a lot less depressing, I promise. Uh, and if you've made it to this point, just thank you for listening.